Hey, welcome back everybody. Today we are gonna do a little test fitting, get our 1025R set up with a new piece of snow removal equipment that I have not used before on a 1025R. And for those of you with a keen eye, you'll notice this is a different 1025R than what we have out of the property. I bought a second one just to have around do some yard work, you know, still show you guys some attachments, just a different setup. The property's a half hour away, so it's just not a hop, skip, and a jump. So it makes more sense to have this unit here. So we did some mowing with it. We bagged some leaves, you know, we actually just took the bagger off. I, If the snow melts off, I'm gonna have to put the bagger back on. There's a lot of leaves underneath the snow, but I need to get the snowblower set up. It looks like winter's inevitable yet again. And as always, if you do end up enjoying this video, I'd love to get a thumbs up from you. Hit subscribe to see more tractor and property maintenance videos. And if you want something for your machine, your tractor, or your skid steer, make sure you check out goodworkstractors.com. We ship all over the country. Okay, so we're going to get this snowblower set up on the tractor today. Probably take it right back off, but you can see my hand here that I'm holding. You know, I don't want to have a manual rotation where you have to reach around behind the seat and crank a rod like this in order to change the direction of the snowblower chute. Ain't nobody got time for that. Ain't nobody got time for that. So what we have here is an electric option for an electric chute rotation for your snowblower. We've done some other electric type of attachments, you know, on the sweep all with their uh, core plug aerator, as well as their, their actual sweeper, PTO driven sweeper, um, an electric grapple from WorkSaver, and then even a Summit Hydraulics diverter kit. Uh, we've tied into the battery and all those different attachments. So this kind of option is becoming more and more prevalent out there. But before we get too far into this video, I just got to say, go blue, go blue. You can do it again. National champs, 97. It's been too long. This is our year. I bet that was a long, quiet, cold drive home, Ohio State fans. Maybe next year. All right, enough of that. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. But before we get started, I want to change out of my dress blues. I don't want to get these dirty. So I'll be right back. A quick tip for you guys too. So we were taking off the Protero bagger system and this applies for really any three-point attachment um, that has a PTO shaft on it. But these PTO shafts are a two piece. That's what allows them to kind of slide and change the overall length that's required as you're raising or lowering an attachment because the length of the PTO shaft is not static, it's dynamic. It's gonna move in and out, get longer and shorter as needed. So, so there's gonna be a two piece system. One side slides over the other side. And so if it's too challenging to get down kind of between the attachment and the back of your tractor and disconnect everything, you know, I'll just pull the tractor away. I'll disconnect the three points and then just either, in this case, we pushed um, the bagger attachment back away because it's on a parking stand. But if you just want to drive forward, maybe with a tiller a little bit or a brush hog and just give yourself some more space or just let it completely come apart, you know, these again can just go right back together. It's really not that big of a process and can save a lot of pain. And a couple notes that folks asked in some previous videos, but you can see there's a sight window right here that's very easy to see right from the operator seat. So you can tell if your hopper is full or not. And then these are going to be quick hitch compatible as well. You can use this with a Spico I did last year. Uh, the guys, when they just threw it out in the shop for me, did and put the Spico on, but when you're ordering, they're gonna ask you if it's quick hitch compatible and you'll get this extra bracket right here that just bolts on in place. Um, they're also going to cut the PTO shaft to the right length for your machine. So that's gonna be part of the process too, is if you're using it with a quick hitch, that's gonna require four or five inch longer PTO shaft. So they're gonna make it a little bit longer for you, but it comes pre-cut, which is a pretty nice bonus. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and get this hooked up now and we're gonna use the Spico Quick Hitch. The Spico is one of the absolute most popular tractor attachments that we sell. You don't do any actual work with this, but if you have to change attachments or hook up three-point attachments a lot, a Quick Hitch in general is going to take, I don't know, 90% of the pain out of that process. It doesn't eliminate every bit of pain, but it makes it life a lot easier. And what makes the Spico different is that it doesn't use bushings. So pretty much every other quick hitch that's on the market requires you to put a big set of bushings. It takes it from a category one size to a category three pin size uh, for these lower links down here, which doesn't make a whole lot of sense. And with those bushings being 40 to $50 a set, meaning per attachment, that cost can add up quickly. So get yourself one of these Spicos. We sell them, goodworkstractors.com. The price does include shipping right to your door. And a couple other quick side notes too. I'm gonna try something that some other folks have done and recommended to me and what they've done and sipe their tires. So if you guys are familiar with that, it's basically cutting some grooves or almost melting some grooves, depending on what you're doing, uh, into your tires. The R4 tires, which are the common tread pattern, they're just not really very good on snow. They're probably the last pick that I would have on snow and ice. So I wanna do something about it. I'm not gonna swap these over to the VersaTurfs. I really love those. I just don't feel like spending the money on this tractor right now. So I'm gonna do something a little bit cheaper, see if we can get some improved traction. So if you guys have experience with that, with siping your tires, you know, 
I know I've seen it done on cars a lot, but on tractors, I'm not sure if it makes a difference. So if you have the experience to share, why don't you do us a favor, leave a comment down below. And also, you're gonna have a lot of weight on your three-point hitch using a blower, so you have to have something up front. You can either put a front end loader on, you know, which I am at some point gonna have my loader on along with a snow pusher. But for now, or if you don't wanna do that, or if you wanna save space, or for whatever reason, get yourself some counterweight on the front. These are gonna be 70 pound weights. We're hanging these right on the integrated black rail that's on the 1025R, uh, 350 pounds. If you get the 41 pounders, obviously you can do the math, it's gonna be less, but I'd encourage you to get more, get as much weight as you can up here that's gonna help with steering. You know, these are the only two tires that are gonna help you turn and go where you need to go. So if you don't have enough traction, if it wants to kind of lift up and get light, especially when it's you know, slippery and icy and everything else, that's not gonna be very good for you. If four wheel drive, you need that as well to help get up hills and navigate. So get yourself some weight. You can add this on for free, no extra shipping cost when you're buying a snow blower or a snow pusher or anything else we sell that ships out on a pallet. So nothing that ships UPS ground, something that ships on a pallet, we can stack these weights on there and send it right along, no extra shipping cost. So as you're navigating the site, look for items that say freight shipping on there, not UPS ground. UPS ground is not gonna be how these things are shipping. Look for other items that say freight shipping shipping. Okay, so something looks a little different about this snowblower, doesn't it? And uh, we used one of these on the 4066 last winter, a lot bigger tractor. They make the same snowblower for the smaller guys too. So this is 54 inches wide, but this is called a pull type snowblower or an inverted snowblower where you can drive forward over your snow instead of having to turn around and face behind you, you know, kind of crane your neck and your back and then drive backwards the whole time. You can go forward with this. And so we did some video showing how this works in operation last year. And I've mentioned to a few folks as well, and I'd encourage you to check out Nick's snowblowing channel. I think it's NIX. He's up in Ontario, uh, in Canada, and he has a huge snowblowing business. And all he uses are inverted or pull type snowblowers on his tractors. Granted, they are larger machines. He wants to get his work done as quickly as possible. He's got quite a fleet going on. It's an impressive operation. I'd encourage you to check out his channel. So MK Martin is gonna be up in Ontario as well. So we sell a lot of the HLA snow pushers. Well, MK is a sister brand to HLA. So you can get the snowblower from MK Martin, the pusher from HLA, they're both coming from Ontario. They make a lot of very high quality attachments. And you'll see this actually has a two year warranty on it for the consumer, as well as a five year gearbox warranty. So not a lot of manufacturers out there are giving you a two year warranty on the entire piece of equipment. So there are a lot of little details that are really gonna add up to a pretty large sum. And the first one is gonna be the replaceable and adjustable skid runner that you have out here on the end. You can get these outfitted with the UHMW or the poly Tyvar, the plastic material to protect your paved and concrete surfaces as well. Same thing with the cutting edge, it's gonna be a, a large bolt on cutting edge. It's gonna come standard with steel. You can upgrade that to the Tyvar if you want to. Now you will see this is gonna be category one, three point and quick hitch compatible, which is always a nice feature to have. You're gonna have an integrated parking stand. As far as your chute control goes, it's going to come standard with a manual chute control. You're going to see us install the electric chute control today, and there's also a hydraulic chute control operation. But important to note is that for any hydraulic operation that you have on the backside of your tractor is going to require an additional hydraulic function on your machine. So if you are not running a front end loader, you can, in theory, get some hoses made up and run those to the back and operate hydraulically the chute rotation and even get a hydraulic chute deflector if you want to as well. Now, one of the cool features you can get on the larger inverted or pull type snow blowers is gonna be a back drag option where you put a big piece of steel on here that bolts on, you can hydraulically raise and lower that. Again, that's gonna take another hydraulic function to operate that. So on the four series tractor that we had, we had three different hydraulic functions. So we had the hydraulic chute rotation, the hydraulic deflector, and the hydraulic back drag to raise and lower that. So that's three hydraulic circuits we had to use on the back side of the tractor. Now what a back drag will allow you to do is get up a lot tighter to a building, a retaining wall, a parked car, whatever it is, and pull that snow away. And then you can drop down the blower and then blow it away. However, my setup this year is gonna to be to have a snow pusher on the loader, and that's gonna have a back drag to allow me to pull up away from the building and everything else and then we can turn around and blow it away. Now I want to get this electric system hooked up here for the actuation but a few final notes. Number one, the 54 inch weighs about 460 pounds which this will lift it up just fine. You've seen it lift it up, but I wouldn't go any bigger, um, not even from a PTO perspective, but more from a weight perspective. You know, this weight is 
pretty far out here. So a 60 inch is really gonna start to push the limits on a 1025R or a 1023E or even a, a Kubota BX as well. So 54 is a good max width there. You are also gonna have a five blade fan in here, not a plastic fan like some of the newer front mounted John Deere snowblowers. Uh, you're gonna have Zerks on both ends here on the auger as well as on the chain end on the back. And then you are gonna have shear bolt protection on both the auger and the fan as well. Okay, so we're gonna hook up the electric chute rotation now to the snowblower. So we have three things going on here to consider and keep in mind. Number one, we have to connect the power to the blower. We have to connect to the power source on the tractor. And then we have to tie it all together to the control. <laughs> Okay, so we just about got done. Well, we got far enough to be able to test it out, try it out, make sure it works like we want it to, but the ring terminals uh, on the end of the cables that came with the electric kit are a little bit too small for the, uh, for the battery here. So we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go to the hardware store, grab some bigger ones, just cut these off, put the new ones on. And then also our controller location it's probably gonna to have to be stuck somewhere on here. So it's not quite long enough to go from all the way back there and have it maybe just sit in the cup holder or sit, sit in a cubby somewhere over here. But I think if I just get a, a 3M sticky put on the back of each side, Velcro it on in place right here, this would be a natural out of the way location for it anyways. Alrighty folks, well that's gonna wrap it up today. Again, if you are looking for a snowblower and you're tired of driving backwards, consider an inverted or a pull type snowblower. They're a real game changer. I enjoyed it last year. It's gonna be a little chilly this year not using a cab, but I think I'll be okay. So it's fun to have another tractor. We're gonna do some things to have some other upgrades going on. Of course, like I mentioned, we're gonna do something I think with siping these tires. Um, I have some things coming from 24 seven parts. We're gonna add on some load and go ramps. I know a lot of you guys really love those uh, to make it a lot easier to take the mower deck off and move it around with a front end loader. LED work lights, gotta do something with the seat. A lot of things going on. So 247parts.com, they're an OEM John Deere supplier. You can use code GWT, get savings. They have, I think it's over 300,000 different parts and accessories for John Deere tractors and mowers, zero turns, gators, you name it. So if you enjoyed this video, I'd love to get a thumbs up from you. If you wanna see the snowblower in action and see other things we're doing to the tractors and developing the property, Make sure you hit that subscribe button. And if you want to buy something for your tractor, don't forget, we ship all over the country. Make sure you check out goodworkstractors.com. Thanks again for taking time out of your day to stop by. And until next time, go blue.